What would an ex YouTube employee do if he was to start a new YouTube channel from scratch? So zero views and zero subscribers. Well, I recently tracked down Tom here, who is, believe it or not, an ex YouTube employee. And I asked him that exact question. And what I wanted to do today is share some of my favorite nuggets from that conversation with you. One of the things that you can think about is starting really narrow. If I were to create a new channel, let's say about aquariums, I've got a couple of aquariums behind me. I wouldn't just create like, oh, Tom's aquarium experience channel. It would have to be super specific. It would be like maybe Tom's fancy goldfish nano tank channel. And what that does is it allows your channel to capture an underserved market. And this is advice that a lot of investors give to entrepreneurs in general, like, go really narrow initially. You could always expand the channel later. So if you're starting from zero, I would definitely find like a niche. I would not go too general. And the second thing I would do is I would try and be consistent with that niche. Being in a niche and then staying consistent for, you know, at least five, 10 videos to kind of give yourself some credibility. Because, you know, a lot of subscribers, as, as you probably know, as a viewer, you need to see a few things before you hit that subscribe button, no matter how good a single video is. And you want to feel like, okay, Okay, yeah, this guy's gonna have a catalog of stuff about this topic and then get those early viewers to discover this video. And I would not rely entirely on YouTube to do that for me. Imagine there's a lot of content getting uploaded to YouTube or any social media platform you know, every minute. They could basically divide all of the video recommendations by every video that has been uploaded. But if you were a viewer, you'd get a very, probably a bad experience because a lot of content just isn't really relevant for you as a viewer. Going out of your way, like if we take my aquarium example, like then I would probably find some fancy goldfish discussion forums or other fancy goldfish, you know, YouTube creators or Twitter kind of conversation and let people know that I've got this channel or that I did this video recently and, and kind of try and drum up some initial interest. So it would be very targeted. It wouldn't be like, oh, I'm going to go to the top 10 aquarium forums and say like, hey, I made a new channel about fancy goldfish. Like, I don't think that that's super ethical nor effective. But if it's very targeted and relevant to a thread, then I think it's okay, especially if you provide some value in the post itself. And I'm just speaking from like a viewer's point of view. If I'm on a forum and someone's like, oh, I made a video about this topic, go here. I don't think I would click on it. But if they said, hey, um, I've had experience with this. Here are some things that work for me. And then, oh, by the way, I also made a video kind of highlighting some of this. Here's a link to check it out. To me, that's a much more kind of like ethical sell. Because once there's some interest and if the video performs, you have a much better chance of then kind of catching that jet stream that we're all looking for. If I had to boil it down for someone that's got a small channel that's been doing it and, and just has not been getting a growing audience, I think it comes down to two questions. Um, can you make your content more engaging and better? And then the second question is, are you making content about the right topic? Because when you think about it, there's like a two by two matrix one is where on the vertical axis, it could be like, how big is the audience for this? It's either very large audience or small for this content. And then on the horizontal axis, it could be like, where would I stack up to my competition for this topic area? And if you're low, low, like, low size of market and I would also not stack up well, like it's probably not gonna be a high performing channel. But if you're like high, high, like huge market and I'm the only one making the Tesla scooter review because somehow I got my hands on one and you know, it's amazing or whatever, you're gonna probably do very well. Most people are actually in the Northwest and Southeast quadrant where it's like, you know, maybe very big audience, but your content isn't standing out or it is standing out, but it's a small addressable market. And, you know, part of the game is kind of figuring out where you wanna be in that kind of market space. Do I wanna try and make my content more compelling? It's gonna take more time and more effort. Or do I wanna go after a different audience and pivot and say, well, I started about aquariums and goldfish, but you know, that's not really working for me. And maybe you experiment with uh, a video about a different topic and you see how it goes. And this is why, and I know it kind of conflicts with some of my advice about being consistent, but being a creator is like being an entrepreneur. You know, you've got to know when it's time to pivot and when it's, when it's time to hunker down and stick with it. There's no formula for that. But generally, if you've been doing one topic for a long time and you felt like you made the content as good as it can be, and it's still not hitting, and you've promoted it and you've done everything you can, there just may not be that much of an audience for you or your content is just not making like the top 10 because for any video, you kind of want to be in the top 10. If you look at like just the number of views that videos get for like goldfish and Siamese, 
beta living together. I'm sure the top three get a lot of views and then it drops off significantly after that. And so, you know, you, you really want to go for a metal position. You, you don't want to be, you know, on page 10 of the search results. Massive thanks to Tom for sharing his info. His channels will be linked down below. And also I loved his point about promotion. It's really interesting to hear someone who's actually worked at YouTube recommend promotion since it's a bit of a controversial topic, whether you should or shouldn't promote your channel in this niche. But Tom thinks you shouldn't. So if you would like to learn how to promote your videos so that you can basically bypass the algorithm and just start manually generating views. I have a video on screen. It goes over my five favorite ways to promote your videos. Check it out. And I think you won't be disappointed.